Showcase product this year. Repower R2.8 liter Cummins diesel. We are here with D from Cummins. So this is R2.8 liter. This is a platform we launched back in 2009. Uh, it's a global engine we manufacture all over the world. We use in applications anything from small pickup trucks all the way up to the Ford Super Duty Series down in South America, cab over uh, trucks, school buses. Um, here in North America, we've started to use it with uh, off-highway equipment. So new emissions regulation, uh, mini excavators, uh, power units, etc. So we have parts availability all over the world for this. The nice thing about this engine is it's 500 pounds. So unlike our beloved 4BT, this actually is a practical fit for a lot of the off-road applications yes. or even just 4x4s, on-road applications, Jeeps, Land Rovers, Land Cruisers, um, without you know the requirement for suspension modifications or firewall modifications. Uh, our, our engine here is about 267 foot-pounds of torque. It's, uh, that's a flat torque curve from 1600 RPM to 3000 RPM. It's a whole different feeling than uh, a gas engine where you know you tend to have to go out in a higher RPM range to get your power. So your cruising is much more comfortable and uh, yeah, it's it's been a great package in a wild week. So Steve, what are we going to get whenever we get this motor available at first quarter of 2017? Yeah, so our, our announcement at SEMA show uh, was that Q1, as soon as we have that EO in hand, uh, we will launch this engine to the market. When you open your box from Cummins, you'll have everything you need to make it as turnkey as our beloved 3.9. Yes. So a lot of people say, oh, the 3.9 is a three-wire engine. And that's almost true. Yes. But if you have the two side by side on the crate with what we're going to offer in this electronic engine versus a mechanical engine, we can actually start this with less wires. So we'll have the ECM, we'll have an alternator, a power steering pump, we will have a flywheel and flywheel housing that advanced adapters already knows how to adapt to. Um, we'll have an engine control uh, harness that goes to the vehicle side that's going to be fairly universal. So you could choose to integrate it in your factory harness or you can just operate it as a standalone. We'll also include an accelerator pedal so there's no confusion as to what you'll need. We did a, a survey for the last year and a half, and we were asking everyone, you know, what would they want this engine in? Uh, we also asked them if they want our V8, our inline six. This one ranked the highest, and it ranked the highest for these applications, uh, mainly Jeep, and not surprising, the JK. However, for the first pass we're gonna do at this, for our first EO application, we're going up to tier one emissions levels. So that's about 1999 gas to diesel swaps. Once you get into the 2007 and newer, with diesel especially, we have what we would consider active after treatment or a particular filter. So that's gonna take a bit more work. It's not to say we're not gonna do it, but we wanted to get out here and get product on the market first and really dip our toes in the aftermarket. Ideally, with this being about 500 pounds, it's comparable to, let's say, a Jeep's four liter. Your suspension doesn't really know the difference. And the same could be said for any of the small block or V8 applications for uh, the Land Rover and Land Cruiser crowd, or those uh, Toyotas that have the inline six diesel. This is definitely a uh, more than comparable package in terms of weight and fitment. It's actually shorter uh, and easier to package. So we're really excited to bring this to market and turn some of these iconic older toys into more practical daily drivers and dependable daily drivers. This is actually going to be a legal swap where a 4BT has never been a yes. legal swap into a vehicle like a Land Cruiser right. or a Jeep. We could never do that. Emissions legal. It's been done many times. This will actually by law, legal, EO number, the California small guys, we will think of it, best way to put it, we'd be thinking of it as like an E-Rod crate engine. You go down to your ref with the EO number. It's gonna be way simpler than any other diesel conversion we can do. We already have the four liter replacement adapter in place. We have a few Jeeps running around with them in test vehicles. As we move from there, you can see over here, we've already added Jeep. 4 liter replacement. We're going to be able to replace a Chevy V8 that had a manual on it. You'll be able to do a GM automatic. So if you put a V8 in your Land Cruiser and you want to, you've already bought the conversion parts, we're going to be able to put this engine in place of your small block Chevy, retain what money you've already spent in adapters, and continue with 
one adapter on the back of the engine to reuse those parts. Motor mounts. We're going to have motor mounts for, we already have specific motor mounts just for the TJ series of Jeeps. That happens to be what our test mules are. We've got a couple different designs. We'll have those fine-tuned and tweaked by the time the engine hits the market. We're going to have the XJ market we found. We have high interest in the XJ market. We'll have a set of bolt-in motor mounts for an XJ. Go back to the original AX15, 3550. We also have more of our universal frame mounts, the guys that are familiar with our Land Cruiser and Land Rover adapter motor mounts. We'll have the same style mounts. Just simply drop this motor in in place of the factory motor or an existing V8 conversion. A little bit about the executive order process. Cummins, you know, we want to have good standing with the EPA and CARB because we have engines in every market from 2.8 liters all the way to 95 liters. So it's very important for us uh, to work with CARB and work with these agencies so that what we're doing is, uh, you know, legal. We don't want to break the law. We, we're a clean company. We're a clean diesel company. And we, we're not coal rollers. You know, we don't want to promote that. So what we're doing with our trade engine program is every single engine sold will have EO guidance. So we're applying for EOs before we sell any of this stuff. What an EO does for a consumer is it takes away this kind of taboo or uncertainty that what they're doing is legal versus illegal. So how an EO works is you can actually look at a vehicle stock emission standard that it was certified to, and then you can look at an EO, and it will tell you which vehicles, so weight class and vintage, that that uh, engine or aftermarket component qualifies for. So if you were to buy this one, for example, and it had an EO on it that was, let's say, pre-1976, and you put it in a 2016 Wrangler, you are not going to be within compliance if you go to a smog station. However, if you follow that EO's guidance, you will be on the up and up when you go see a wreck. You'll be able to sell your vehicle or resell it in all 50 states. You will not have a problem titling it. The EO process is just a clear black and white guidance as to what is legal and what is not. So this engine right here, uh, one thing we're missing is a power steering pump. This is a display engine only. When you get the crate, we plan to have an alternator, a power steering pump, you've got your fan hub here, and you'll have a belt on it. There's an option down here uh, for people to adapt or fit their own air conditioner compressor, uh, but we call this our mega bracket. This mega bracket is held on by four uh, bolts here into the block. And although for the crate engine program, we'll probably start off with one or two very kind of universal applications, the aftermarket will be able to bolt right onto here with, with relative ease. There's nothing bolted to the face of the block. It's just these four bolts on the side. And then if they want to get really specific and dial in to specific applications that our mega bracket's not the best for, they can do that uh, with uh, a lot of ease. We're running an eighth groove pulley system here for a serpentine drive belt. Um, and we've got a belt tensioner here that's very familiar to Cummins customers. We've got uh, one thing that's kind of unique for us, diesel engines don't create vacuum. And so since we're certifying these engines for gas to diesel replacement, the 4B crowd's very familiar with going to a hydro boost, brake booster setup, or if they have uh, you know, HVAC controls that are vacuum assist, it's kind of annoying if they're on an electric pump. This has a cam driven vacuum pump, so you can plug your brake booster right into here, your HVAC controls right into here, anything you need vacuum for is cam driven. Uh, you've got an oil cooler here, and you've got a remote mount uh, oil filter housing. So we have an option for a spin-on just on the bottom, but we found that in a lot of the straight axle, four-wheel drive, uh, especially driver's side drop applications, it was pretty close to that, uh, that pumpkin. So we didn't want someone to then crush their filter if they're playing in the rocks. So we thought that a universal oil filter that you could mount elsewhere remote would be the best. It's running off of this, and you'd have a remote mount oil filter elsewhere. The engine will come dressed with a starter. Uh, the the engine, like I said, if you look at it, uh, when you compare it to a 4B, you will be able to start this thing on a skid if you want. Uh, it is completely kind of a self-contained engine. 
And that is, you know, Cummins as an independent diesel engine manufacturer, our stuff goes in all sorts of applications and OEMs all around the world. So offering it as much of a self-contained drop-in ready package as possible is one of our strengths. Bringing that to the aftermarket for crate engines is exactly what we want to do. We want to knock down any barrier that people might have when it comes to putting a different engine into a different vehicle, especially when it comes to diesel. Uh, one of the cool things about this engine in particular is a high pressure fuel pump here. Also has its own integrated lift pump. So no more inline pumps needed. You don't have to do any kind of special uh, remote pump. You can take out your in-tank pump if you're doing, for example, a TJ swap and just have a nice pickup tube. Uh, the way that we've started these engines is uh, once we do a swap and we have brand new lines or empty lines, we'll just disconnect a quick disconnect fitting here. We'll put some air into the filler cap. And you know once you have fuel come out of that line, your buddy tells you stop. He clips it, turn the key, and the engine fires. So uh, that's been a really nice feature not to have to worry about uh, electric pump relays and all that good stuff. All right, so like I said, this engine is a little different than the first engine that we're applying for an EO for. Uh, this engine is missing an EGR cooler and a crossover pipe, but it's all still within the footprint of what is displayed here. Uh, one other thing is for this uh, gas to diesel emissions conversions, our downpipe from our turbo actually has a small passive diesel oxidation catalyst or DOC on it, and then it sweeps out right where your normal downpipe would anyway. Uh, it's a completely passive element that helps take the hydrocarbon kind of smell off, that edge off, and it works really well as a downpipe that you don't have to then fabricate. It's easy to bolt to, it stays within the footprint of the engine. Uh, it can be seen uh, on the demo Jeep we have running around. When you have a gas system that you're taking off, you have EVAP lines from your fuel tank. Uh, our emissions aren't dealing with EVAP, so that can go. Uh, gas engines depend on a uh, uh, catalytic converter and an EVAP system. Diesel engines are a little different. So our certification that we're applying for uh, will not use any of the factory emissions equipment. It will be a certified standalone package. That being said, you will take the gasoline uh, catalytic converter off and only use our passive diesel oxidation catalyst. The cost will simply be from our engine out, it will be exhaust pipe, muffler, done. Uh, so no factory catalytic converter. All right, so uh, you know we gave you a lot of information really quick on this engine. There's still a lot more information to come. Uh, the announcement was just this Tuesday, so we haven't released everything yet. You know, we haven't talked about pricing. We haven't given the EO number because we don't have it in hand yet. Uh, but what we have done is we started CumminsRepower.com, and that's a website where any information that we have on this that we can share, we do. It's also got a contact form on it and a link to our survey page. So if you do want our V8 next or you do want an inline six next, let us know. That's exactly how we decide what to bring to market next. I know Steve and Advanced Adapters, they've got a great product guide online that we'll direct people to because everyone asks us, well, what transmission does it bring to? Buyer's Guide does have a summary in, just like Steve said, what we have available. AdvancedAdapters.com, stay tuned. It will be announced as we get more information. Uh, we're gonna work on trying to get a link to the Cummins Repower site from our site so we can share information back and forth and feel free to get a hold of us. There's email addresses available on our website. I know there is on your website. Feel free to email us and we'll do our best to answer your questions. So as we're releasing this engine, people want to know what do they get in the box? Well, working with guys like Steve at Cummins, we're trying to package stuff so you get everything you can need for your specific application. Advanced adapters, they, the adapter for your chosen transmission is going to come. We're going to have motor mounts for the application we're wanting to put in. We're looking at the TJ series of Jeeps. We can do YJ and CJ series of Jeeps with what's already under development when the motor is released. We will have the motor mounts, cooling system recommendations, and engine to transmission adapters or even possibly the transmissions that match up if we have to replace your current unit. From there, Steve, what's going to come in your box and how's it going to come? Yeah, so in addition to our engine control module, our wiring harness, our pedal, 
we're going to try to give as much guidance as people need to do kind of what we would call an installation quality audit. So this is kind of a do-it-yourself installation quality audit so that you make sure that you have the right cooling package size. Um, you know, this is a charge air cooled engine, uh, so we'll give some recommendations on minimum sizes, maximum sizes, because you don't want it too small, you don't want it too big. Um, we'll give specific references to, you know, for example, the 4 liter radiator is more than sufficient for this. So if you start with a 4 liter, you don't have to do anything to your radiator. It's, a, it's, it's great. It runs at 177 degrees, 180 degrees with the 4 liter radiator. Uh, so uh, we want to provide as much of that guidance as possible so that you have no confusion, no question about what you're doing uh, and that you size your cooling package correct. You know, we'll also from the Cummins side, we'll give a big shout out to SEMA and SEMA members because SEMA members go above and beyond to make sure that their products for our product are the best in the industry. If it doesn't have SEMA on it, you know, don't buy it. Exactly. And to touch on one other thing our customers may not know out there, charge air-cooled engine would actually be what we refer to as an intercooler is what the general public may not know by what the terminology is, but size of the intercooler piping will have that. We're going to have availability of plumbing products and stuff to help get that in place for you. We use in applications anything from small pickup trucks all the way up to the Ford Super Duty Series down in South America, cab over uh, trucks, school buses.